hello everyone and welcome to the channel okay hopefully you all had a blessed and wonderful sunday total morning afternoon and evening day full of love relaxation and meditation on positive and good things but we're going to get right on into candy and the gang season one episode four it was titled for us spilling the old lgt okay Cha. to me the whole storylines or the whole centerpiece was based on shandrika and all of her line ways honey i'm like girl do you not know that they have cameras everywhere oh child and you know of course candy wanted Shandrika to come clean on what she had told Patrick when they were out together congregating outside of the business and stuff and I don't know where Shandrika get all this stuff I'm like girl have you not seen reality TV have you not been looking at Candy on Real Housewives of Atlanta when they have confessionals child do you not see that they really have cameras in and everywhere and can't have cameras in her business <laughs> establishment because really they be just looking for theft they don't really want to see y'all not doing this even though they can use it against you all um but they really be using cameras for theft and all that kind of stuff but when they do see other things that they didn't think their workers or employees would do they will bring it up not like candy what in the world are you talking about? Let's not tell her we saw it on camera. I'm like, do you not know about confessionals too? And everybody's going to see this stuff play back? I'm like, Candy, you off your game, girl. But anyway, like I said, this particular episode was really featured around Shandrika and her lion and Brandon and Dominique getting together i'm like they do look like a nice couple but i don't know if brandon can keep up with dominique in a sense it seems like brandon kind of slow and anytime i like he got a learning disability or anything i'm just saying slow you know what i'm saying like somebody gotta tell him what's going on because all that stuff be don't went over his head all right but let's get into it let's go on we got taught and his confessionals with Candy and all the back and forth about Shandrika. He wants her fired. He wants her gone like yesterday. He don't like her. He don't like her attitude. But Candy's still holding on because she says, she quoted her statement that they really can't find anybody who is as consistent at wanting to be at OLG and doing that particular uh, task that she's been hired to do which is a hostess so i'm like well yeah she has the aesthetics meaning she looks the part she's pleasing she's like your first thing a person sees when they come into you know your establishment so she's well put together she's pretty but I, i'm kind of like tall when she's going around him just trying to make everybody else talk about how the bad business is and y'all don't care this that and the third and y'all know excuse me guys <sighs> y'all know i don't really agree with Todd and this that and the third but after watching chandrika from episode one up to number four i think they do may or may have a problem with chandrika uh you know we know she late uh half the time or she's right on time, not leaving any error for, you know, lateness. It's like, I'm coming in under the wire, but I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. You're supposed to be there at least 15 minutes prior. Just pretty much making sure everything is set up before you open those doors. But candy still feels some kind of way but towards the end of this episode she was like yeah she need to go <laughs> i'm like but well, todd pretty much been telling you that from day one and from episode one to four she really hasn't changed she's just you know just crazy she wants to know who 
uh, told on her. And she's going around doing a campaign of trying to find out who told on her. And I'm like, oh, well, Don Juan. Yes, let's look at Don Juan on camera. Yes, Sandrika, he the one told on you, baby. <laughs> but you really kind of told on yourself by going around here thinking you're off camera or you're out of sight, out of mind. Uh, Yeah, you told on yourself pretty much. And in that scene right there, it looked like she wanted to cry. I'm like, girl, don't try to cry now. You sitting up here running your mouth like it's on, like you got a battery in, like you the Energizer Bunny. And you sitting here doing this, that, and the third. And I'm like, girl, maybe you are using this platform to get you to another heightened place in, I don't know, in the industry or somewhat. But, yeah, I, if I was Ken, I would have to kind of, like, let you go. Because if you can't put your feelings out when you're having a meeting... Then, just like Dominique and Brandon, they have little things to say. Really, uh, Dominique don't want to be there. And it's just yeah, what it is. They going to, I guess, let her stay there. But to me, it seems like they need to just, uh, how you say, it, get rid of her too. But, you know, Todd is like... I don't have time for this. I, you know, this, that, and the third. He, he feel like he need to be somewhere else than running up here at the OLG trying to put out fires that Philip and Don Juan should be handling, and this, that, and the third. Okay, but I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay, Shantri, because that's a little meeting they had, but it's a few more other people. That uh, they didn't show. I guess they didn't want to be a part of the television show. Or Candy didn't put them uh, as a person she wants to have on the show. They were just really, really regular employees. However, they have a little staff meeting, okay? And uh, everybody's saying this, that, and the third. Melvin, which is the... Um, the manager of the kitchen. Uh, he's basically saying he likes Philip. Philip's good. This, that, and the third. And I'm like, okay. All right, Melvin. I know you don't want to talk about nobody. Maybe you just have that type of spirit. You do what you do when you come in. You do your hard work and you leave it there. And that's a good way to do things. Then, um, I don't forgot. I know it was Mama Joyce, but it seemed like it was somebody else. But anyway, Mama Joyce goes in and she talks about Brandon about he don't do nothing and this that and the third <laughs> and you know just yeah what it is mama just gonna get on to everybody pretty much and then um Aunt Bertha said she tried to say hey to Brandon but Brandon ain't say shit to her and she ain't talking to him no more either Brandon looking all stupid like really do I need to come you know, say hey to you or whatever. Yes, Brandon, it's the polite thing to do when you pass a person or you come in contact with a person. I'm pretty sure your mom and daddy taught you that. It's called whether they say hey to you or not. It's a blessed day. You woke up this morning. You should be happy. But anyway, hello, how you doing? And keep it moving. That's all. That's all they were trying to say. Uh, and after the meeting, Brandon went over there and gave Aunt Bertha a so, so, so kind of hug. Um, I guess to pacify her. Oh, excuse me, guys. I know I keep yawning, but it's ooh, it's past my bedtime. And plus, I've been working. I ain't have a nap today. I thought, like, oh my god, I need to get in the bed. But I'm like, no, let me go on and do this for the fam, cause they might be waiting on me to talk about it, which there ain't really too much to talk about. Um, but then we got Torian. He confronts Patrick uh, in the parking lot about being fired as his little decorator and all this thing of his apartment. And I'm like, how are you going to fire you when I thought it was both him and Melvin wanted you to come in and see what you could do with the decorating and stuff of their apartment. But Melvin ain't really too much saying too much or anything. He's just there. It is what it is. Then we got Mr. F uh, Philip. Now, I don't know what Philip be doing, 
But Philip got some nice ass looking male friends. You know what I'm saying? It's not all of them are gay. Like, damn. I didn't catch the boy's name. He said it, but I didn't catch it, y'all. And I couldn't find a picture of him either. But if you were looking at the story, you go back to look at the story. He looks nice. I'm like, God damn. Is there something in the water that's turning out a lot of black men to gay or what? What's going on? Woo, because his boyfriend was cute as well. Like, damn. But anyway, that's, you know, he was sitting over there having drinks with him and talking about the staff. And, of course, he was talking about Brian and, and Torian and... He feels like he's getting to liking them, but it just is what it is. And his uh, friend kind of like, you know, well, they just need, you know, time to um, figure out your type of management skills. And, you know, and he's pretty much like saying you need to go a little easy on them. And it's something like, um, what do you call it, Philip having anything in his cupboard. You know, it's kind of looking bare. I'm like, I know he was trying to hide the cameraman from taking pictures or, or filming but we know you ain't having that, honey. You 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 okay? You a bachelor? Your man ain't here twenty four seven. So we know you ain't got a lot of um, uh, what do you call it? Plates and spoons and stuff up there. It's okay. Don't try to hide it. But uh, he was doing what he needed to do. But uh, going a little bit going back to um, what's his name? Patrick. Patrick's so whooped. I don't even really know why we see him because his girlfriend's so safari she just too much she was at his place I'm like when did she get a key to you and your cousin's apartment she don't need to have a key to y'all apartment are you crazy but anyway she had a key she was waiting in the bed for him to come home i like uh uh-uh, that's 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 too much i said no, i know he don't call himself being whipped but i'm like where's patrick mama where's patrick mama because uh i'm birthday need to get involved with that if you ain't got no ring on your finger, honey, you don't need to have no uh key to the apartment. But that's another here nor there. But she was pretty much running everything down to um Patrick that she's not going to have this person, that person, you know, come to the housewarming party. And I'm like, why is she even, ah, she's just too much. And I don't even really have the energy to go in on her because it's like wasted energy. You have young women out there that think they can boss a guy. And when that guy does grow up and see that he's been given too much power to that woman, then she's going to have a rude awakening. Then it could be he a henpeck man. And when I say henpeck, it's kind of old school way of saying things that a man is whooped. That he does everything that the girlfriend tell him or the wife tell him, and he's very submissive. You know what I'm saying? Don't have no say so, no thought. He has to, um, he has to relay everything to her, meaning the whether she's the girlfriend still or she's the wife, and then he pretty much lends to her understanding and what she want to do, and whatever she says goes. I'm on her side. <laughs> Like, you know, his whole essence is taken away. His own train of thought, reasoning, logic, and all is thrown to the wayside. Because he's going to go in whatever way or pos- whatever position or stance she takes. He's going to take it as well. So, that, that was a really piss poor and tore him. You know, he did. So, he, he, he shaded her and his confessionals real good. He said, honey, uh, Safari... Um, works on booties and he works on bathrooms or bedrooms or something it's like the styling part i <laughs> said so go ahead Patrick. i mean go ahead tori you got her sold up together and i hope she really does see your uh confession so she can see where she ranks with you in reality because i know you were trying to stroke her ego when y'all were at brandon's dinner that his parents were there in, in town or whatnot, and he wanted to introduce his uh, family to, or his family, mom and dad, and the rest of the game to uh, Dominique and, and his friends and, and co workers that he supervises over uh, at the OLG. And I'm like, okay, he invited um, Patrick, not Patrick, but Philip, but Philip didn't show up. So that was a, uh, maybe they, he did show up, but they didn't get the filming on him. But I was like, I don't 
understand why Safari, which is Patrick's girlfriend, is so in denial. She's so afraid of Shandrika getting too close to Patrick, which is her ex boyfriend or sexual partner or whatever they were called with each other or called towards each other, whatever relationship they had. Um, because for us, you listen to Patrick tell it, they didn't have a relationship, they just had a sexual relationship. But you know, he's gone with somebody else, and she has her own fiance named June, which I don't think I just have this this feeling that they ain't gonna last too long either, even though they're supposed to be engaged to get married. But <laughs> it just is what it is. Um, let me see. Okay, I'm upset about that. Oh, and Don Juan dropping dime about picking up um, Shandrika talking about uh, Todd and Candy, about they really don't care about their personnel. They don't care about the restaurant, this and third. And he really thought that Candy and Todd should uh, hear that information. And he had it on tape and recording. They saw the whole thing, so Todd, like, yeah, we really got to talk to her, because this is, don't make no sense, you know. If she want to be here, or she don't want to be here, and Candy was uh, concurring with him. Then we had a cute scene with Brian and Rashad, uh, having a small talk at Brian's um, pad or apartment, and he was trying to go off in his little cute way about management. I'm like, little boy, sit down, sit, sit down, okay? We really don't want to go on and talk about you too much because what you were saying, you should say it pretty much at the um, meeting, staff meeting that y'all had. But you were not saying too much either. Um, let me see. And that was pretty much it, guys. It really wasn't too much to chew the fat on. Like I said, it was really... Todd and Candy trying to see where Shandrika really fits in into the restaurant going forward. She, they keep, her name keeps coming up on uh, situations of they don't give a damn about their employees, meaning Todd and Candy. And, you know, she already was complaining about she don't get paid enough. And, you know, Patrick came back and told her, well, meaning Candy and Todd, well, really Candy, what was said at some little uh, meet and greet that they had with one another after hours and Shandrika was just going in. So, I don't know, because I'm like, mm, was this just off of TV to have Shandrika go off the way she did and then think that Candy and them were going to find out? I mean, I would w want to see, like, a speed-up version getting to it. I think Candy said they have 10 episodes with this first season let's see how fair how did she fare because if you do have somebody going putting salt on your name trying to uh, make everybody uh, on staff agree with your opinion on what's going on you know I'm like she's trying to hijack the ship that Todd and Candy has put together <laughs> and she wanted to become the captain or something hell I don't know what it is but uh, somebody done told her that that was her restaurant and she gonna do it however she wants to do it and that's just it. Now, I don't know if that's just her young spirit or she really just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm sure Candy and Todd will work it out with her. Whether she's gonna be a continued success as a hostess or well, we won't see her uh, in season two if Candy do gets a season two. On the OLG gang. Okay. But that's pretty much all that happened. Wasn't nothing really going on too much. Um, it was a cute scene where Todd and Candy was meeting with the staff. And wanted to hear um, their concerns about what they were dealing with at the restaurant. And how they could go forward. Um, but Todd, you know, his confessionals. He pretty much was like... She always a problem. Let's just go on and get rid of her. Let's just nip this in the bud. But Candy does know that Todd and Philip, they already ready to pull the trigger. You know, they ready to shoot up everybody that really don't have the uh, thought process of them. And they, you know, they don't want to give their all. Because he said he just want them to work. I'm like, Todd, we just want you to get from under Candy's uh, shadow. And see what you can do. But we, we see we can't do that. 
so we, we, we might need to get Cedric a little uh, more time to settle in with new management. But again, like I said, if Shandrika's going to go through the whole team and put salt on the owner's name here and there, then I guess she don't need to be there. But uh, it's like a little give and take here and there. And it seems like Candace trying to do the right thing. But, you know, Shandrika, Shandrika keep having, you know, outside opinions. But when she's confronted by the owners, she feels... Uh, they're ganging up on her or she don't want to actually tell the truth of what actually went down. So I'm like, are you that stupid, Shandrika? Mm, you giving me Cynthia vibes. But yeah, here or there, you know, they're young. Uh, and I guess, I mean, I couldn't be filmed, I don't think, uh, when I was um, working in Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's my first job when I was 15. Uh, but, you know, we didn't have all that out there. But a camera following you everywhere besides the bathroom. Um, I, I don't know if I could do that because I probably would have to say, get that damn camera out my face. Or you're going to hear a lot of cussing going on. Y'all going to have to do a lot of editing. Okay, but that's just me. Um, so I, could, I salute all of them that are on film and they're willing to share their lives or their work lives to the masses, you know, and depending on how they edit you. But then again, you know, what if you, if you don't say anything that's bad or out of the way, they can't add it. They can't edit you in a bad light. Now, if you sit there and be running your mouth and be doing this, that, and the third, then, yeah, they might pick certain clips they want to, you know, edit you on. But it's still going to be your opinions. It's going to be your face. It's going to be your mouth that the words are coming out of. So, Ah, when they saying people be editing you wrong. No, if you don't give them nothing to say against you or use against you when you're taping, then it, they pretty much can't edit you in no bad light. But that's all I had again, guys, for Candy's, um, Candy and the Gang Season 1, Episode 4. And it was by, uh, called Spilling the OLGT. All right. So I hope y'all like it. Love, we got to have more. You know, in those comments, y'all let me know what y'all thought about um, this a particular episode. It, don't, it, don't, it really just don't seem like it's going to be gearing up to anything unless somebody want to fight or somebody want to confront Candy them about certain things, you know. This seems like an everyday run-of-the-mill type of working relationship. So, I don't know if, you know, it's going to be, you know, interesting to keep doing a uh review on it uh because like i said i don't you know brian can't keep pulling out his ass you know what happened to him about his uh, uh the abuse he was going through and just that and a third because we heard it we liked it we're glad he's doing well great psa per public service announcement about not doing drugs not being caught up into getting caught up into a situation of any type of abuse uh, we liked it that we were glad for that but i mean what else we got here uh everyday run of the meal issues you know but uh we'll see we'll keep watching and we'll keep reviewing and, and putting it out for y'all and i will see y'all next video guys and have a great start of your week your work week bye bye